executives from companies including Twitter, Amazon, Google, testified before the Senate Commerce Committee yesterday over the question of privacy. While supporting broad policy changes, representatives pushed back on some of the toughest legislation. Joining me right now is former chief marketing officer at General Electric, vice chair, as well as author of the new book titled Imagine It Forward, Courage, Creativity, and the Power of Change. Beth Comstock is here. Beth, great to see you. Thanks so much for Thanks joining for having us. Me. Yeah, it's great to have you this morning. And I know, well, we worked together for so long. We worked at NBC together for decades, and then CNN. we worked at CNN yeah, as well. Yeah, you were just a pop then. That's right. And it's, so it's good to see you good again. Good to see you. Um, you've worked while you were at GE a lot on technology and innovation, yeah. and I know one of your big interests was Silicon Valley. What's your thought on this group today, uh, given the power and size that they have become, yeah. now even sparking the interest of Congress, who's looking at perhaps legislation here. Yeah, well, I went into Silicon Valley, first at, through an NBC lens, then through GE, but always as sort of an established company coming in. And uh, they were the cool kids, right? They were driving the future in exciting ways. But I think what happened, to, what has happened to Silicon Valley but is they've become too insular. They haven't opened enough up enough to new ideas, to thinking ahead in some cases of where's the future going to go. And I think we're seeing some of that play out. I mean, still great companies, but maybe a bit too insular. I mean, you, you've worked at GE, which has obviously had been a mammoth company. Yeah. And now you've got companies like Google who yeah. are uh, control 90% yeah. of search. <laughs> are these companies too big as well? Well, I think we ought to be asking ourselves, what is, what is the price of scale? I think I saw that through a GE lens, you, the, certainly the generation of GE leaders that I was part of dealing with a lot of complexity that happens when you get to scale and are they going to be able to take the same risks are they able to do the things that got them there I think we all ought to ask that about big companies so you wrote the book uh, imagine forward courage creativity and the power of change what are you saying in the book in terms of how these companies need to change yeah well I think we need more we need everyone to fight for the future that's really what I'm trying to say with the book we need more people to think ahead to the future if you're at Facebook are you thinking ahead okay we're doing all of that we're doing these amazing things but are we thinking through the things both good and bad that could erupt in the future and so I'm trying Trying to sort of fight for a more imagination in work, more creativity toward the future. That's a big thing. And the openness, open up to new ideas, to diversity of thought, not just diversity of, of gender and ex diversity of experience as well. So that's a lot of what I tried to do with the book is fight for different perspectives. It's an ironic comparison, actually, as you step back yeah. and look at what we're talking about yeah. in terms of the market value of a Google, the market value of an Amazon, a trillion dollars yeah. is what we're talking about. And then you look at General Electric, yeah. where you spent so many years, it now has a market value of less than $100 billion. Yeah. This has to pain you, Beth. It's, it's painful. It is. I'm a shareholder. I spent my whole career, pretty much my whole career in GE. Um, what happened from your perspective? You're an insider. Yeah. Tell us how you see yeah, it. Yeah, well, I haven't been at GE for a year, so a lot's changed. It's a new day, new leadership team. You know, John came in, new team in, new old team out. But even before John came yeah. in, the company had plummeted. So uh, what course. do you think has yeah. happened? Well, I think it's what we were talking about earlier, a lot of Complexity in the run-up to scale of GE, you had GE Capital, a lot of different, you know, it was a conglomerate. Conglomerates are no longer in favor. You want a more focused company. The company was on a path to get there, but it's hard work. Complexity, the company needed to move fast. you got to get the culture to move. All that takes time. I worry a little bit about our market system. I mean, I, I think you need the short-term predictability, but you also need to make room for the long-term, and that takes work. You know, Jeff Immelt really tried to change the company and move it toward yeah. technology-driven, yeah. move it toward advancement. But then the critics might say, did he sell off too many assets? I, 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 don't, I don't know how you can have it both ways. I mean, you needed to simplify the company. I mean, I look, we got into clean tech in a, in a big way. You'd, you'd argue maybe even more needs to happen there. The digitization of industry really early, more, that's going to happen. That is absolutely going to happen. So I think those moves, I look at GE and the future of manufacturing. It's amazing what they're doing. So I think those seeds are there. Will the market have patience? Will the leadership team keep investing in those? Those are questions I think we need to be asking. And I'd say of these big, now big monolithic companies, the Amazons, the Google, we need to be asking what's next for them. Are they taking the right risks for the future? So can you compare what you've learned at GE and apply it to some of these Silicon Valley companies? Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm not sure they want to hear from traditional companies, and yeah. I think therein might be a lesson. What could they learn? I think traditional companies have had to get good at culture, right? We've had to get really good at, you've worked at some, some big 
companies as well in your career. Culture is really important. Yes, it is. And you look at the Ubers of the world, they've had to come to their own terms with what it means to have a good culture. How uh, did culture change at GE with the transition from Jack Welch to Jeff Immelt? Yeah, well, I think the culture, we became more global just because the markets were going there, so much more uh, open to global markets. I think more focused on manufacturing, technology. I hope the culture ultimately became more um, ad ad adaptive, embraced adaptation, but honestly, it wasn't fast enough. And I think that may be a caution tale for any established company now to say are we moving fast can we get rid of the complexity fast enough and it's hard it's really hard you know it, it, it's also hard to point fingers yeah. but of course the old GEers are looking yeah. at their shares plummet in yeah. value and blaming Jeff Himmelt yeah. uh, how is he doing uh, do you think that uh, there's blame to go around from even before Jeff got there look I hate blame games yeah. I mean that's what I tried to do with my book I could easily have called it fail forward because I tried to highlight the failures that you need to have on your path to success. It's look, there's enough blame for everybody to go around. I worked for Jack Welch in the Jack Welch era. It's an amazing time. The run up to scale was amazing, yeah. but it couldn't last forever. Trees don't grow to the sky. I actually used to sit in presentations where they would be trees grow to the sky. Businesses nor trees nor businesses grow to the sky. Yeah. We might have for, for seen that a bit. Jeff what, a, were there were there issues that you remember? You were in the executive yeah. suite. I mean, what, were there things that you remember that you could say, you know what? This this was one of the telltale signs. This was something that maybe we, we should have done differently. I think just this sense that business was going to just grow and grow yeah. and grow forever. Um, and look, it was a heady time. Jack was a great CEO for his era. Let's not forget he was really good. I think Jeff was a really good CEO for his era. He, he saw 9-11, the Lehman Brothers, financial crisis. We were in a position with GE Capital at a time when it fell out of favor. The business model no longer worked. I think people didn't appreciate the debt that was associated with it, the complexity. So all that, I mean, Jeff had a tough job. I'm not to say were mistakes made, sure. Every CEO makes mistakes. Yeah, and here we are 10 years from the financial yeah. crisis. But you know, Marie, it's not yeah. just a CEO issue. I think that's yeah. another thing we ought to ask. I mean, we, we sort of look at these CEOs as the gods of business, and, yeah, good and point. they need teams. I, one of the reasons I wrote my book was I want to sort of unleash more of the managers, the people mid-career. We need them to drive change, and leaders alone can't do that.